What's going on guys, ZTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Radaxa Rock Pi 4 version 1.4. In the past I have done a review on the Rock Pi 4, I believe I had version 1.1, but they have added some new additions to the 1.4 version. As of making this video, there are several operating systems available for the Rock Pi 4. Armbian, Manjaro, Debian, Recall Box, a few other Linux-based media distros, and we also have Android and Android TV. But in this video, I'm going to be testing out Android TV 9.0. This is their newest build for the Rock Pi 4, and I'm really interested to see how it performs. And if the interest is here, I will make a few more videos on the Rock Pi 4 running Manjaro and Debian. I'd like to compare the performance against the Raspberry Pi 4. But if you're new to single board computers, I think the easiest thing to do is install Android as long as there's a build available for your single board computer. So in this video, we'll be testing out Android TV 9.0. It's their newest release and it does come pre-installed with Google Play. Redaxa was kind enough to send me over the new 1.4 version along with some extra goodies like the M.2 extension board and the power over ethernet board. So these will be tested in a later video as long as the interest is there. I also received the heatsink kit because this little board's gonna need it. It's powered by the Rockchip 3399 and if you know anything about this chipset, you know it gets quite hot. So extra cooling is always a plus with this SOC. Before we get into the testing, I did want to go over the specs real quick because that's really important with these single board computers. For the CPU, we have the Rockchip 3399. This is a 6 core CPU, 2 A72 cores at 1.8 GHz and 4 A53 cores at 1.4. The GPU is the Mali T860 MP4 at 800 MHz. As for the RAM, you can get this with 1 GB, 2 GB or 4 GB. All of them will contain LPDDR4 at 3200 megabits per second. There's tons of storage options for the Rock Pi 4. There's an eMMC module slot, you can also run your operating system from USB, micro SD, and even an M.2 SSD because we have a slot on the bottom. 802.11abgn and AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, and gigabit ethernet with PoE. 40 GPIO pins, just like the Raspberry Pi and most single board computers on the market nowadays. 3.5 millimeter audio slash video jack, full size HDMI, power over ethernet header, and power to the board comes in through a USB Type-C connection. And it does support Qualcomm Quick Charge, so you have a wide range of voltage inputs. So you can do 5 volts, 3 amps, 12 volts, 2, 15, 2, or 22. As for the operating systems available, we have Debian, Android, Android TV, Armbian, Recall Box, Manjaro, and there's a few others floating around. If you find something you really like, let me know in the comments below. So with all that out of the way, let's get into some testing. For my power supply, I'm using a 5 volt 3 amp USB Type-C connection. I do have the heatsink installed on the Rock Pi 4, and I'm running the operating system from a 16 gigabyte eMMC module. So here it is, the Android TV 9.0 build for the Rock Pi 4. It actually functions really well, and this time around we do have Google Play pre-installed. I've already installed a bunch of my favorite apps to test out, and I also had to sideload a few because they weren't available on the Android TV Google Play Store. Mainly some benchmarking apps like Geekbench and Intutu. And speaking of Intutu, it doesn't work on this device, it just keeps freezing up. Another thing that doesn't work is Netflix from the Google Play Store. This is the Android TV version, and it just won't allow me to start it on this device. But one thing that works really well is the live TV channels. Now I did set this up with Pluto TV, so we're pulling directly from there. But you can have this on your main menu and watch your favorite shows as long as they're airing at that time. It's a pretty cool little addition, but you could always just open up the app directly and watch them through there if you want. One thing I was really interested in testing out was video streaming. So I went to Hulu and it does work on this device. Unfortunately, like I mentioned, Netflix doesn't. But we do get the Android TV version of YouTube and it works really well, even when streaming 4K content. Now, I was pretty sure that this board was gonna be able to handle 4K streaming, but when it comes to native 4K video playback from a hard drive or internal storage, it's a different story. It really depends on the codec you're using. But streaming 1080p 60 or 4K 60 content from YouTube or other apps that support it works really well on this device. I also tried to run a few benchmarks like Geekbench, 3DMark, and Antutu. 
I couldn't get 3D Mark or N22 to finish up, but Geekbench did finish, and the score actually looks a little low here for this chipset. In the past, I've tested this on other boards, and we scored much higher on the multi-core side, but here, in single core, we have 1140, multi-core, 2205. Keep in mind that I do have that big heatsink on here, so I'm not thermal throttling this chip. I think the kernel needs a little more work. It does have a built-in media center, so we can go in here and play music, video, or even display our images from an external drive or internal storage. We're going to test out a little bit of native video playback. We're going to go with 1080p and 4K. My go-to test is Big Buck Bunny. First up, we have 1080p, 60fps. This is an MP4. No problem at all with 1080p, 60fps playback. Next up. Same video, but 4K, 30 FPS. Pretty smooth here and the sound is dead on. But when we move over to the same exact video, 4K 60, we run into some issues. Now this video has always given me trouble on these smaller single board computers, and I've really been waiting on a new ARM chipset that'll run this at full speed. Now in the past, I've been able to do this on the Nvidia Shield Android TV with no issues at all, but most single board computers I've ever tested this on have a lot of issues with playback. Video seems pretty smooth here. I don't quite think we're at 60, but the sound is way off, and this is what happens with this video. So it's really going to come down to the codec you're using with your 4K videos, if you want to do native video playback from an external drive or internal storage. Now I'm going to move over to a native Android gaming test, and then we'll wrap this up with a little bit of emulation. I know this isn't a hard one to run, this is turbo dismount, but me and my kids have been having a lot of fun with this on the Nvidia Shield, so I figured I'd go ahead and test it here. Looks like you're going to have no problem playing this game on the Rock Pi 4, running the Android TV build. We'll move over to something a little harder to run, Real Racing 3, and performance with this 3D game is great, so you really shouldn't have any issue running any of the games available on the Android TV version of Google Play. Now it's time to get into a little bit of emulation. First up, we're going to go with Dreamcast. I'm using the Redream emulator from Google Play. I'm going to let you know right off the bat, this thing is not going to run GameCube. It's not going to run PS2 very well. Because as it goes right now, I'm even having a few issues with Dreamcast emulation. This emulator works on a lot of lower end devices quite well. Overall, we should be getting a nice steady 60 FPS with Soul Calibur 1 here, but I see some drops into the low, low 50s. Now even with the FPS counter shut off, you can feel it, you do notice it. And even with a 2D game like Marvel vs. Capcom 2, we're still getting those frame dips, but it's going a lot lower with this one. Next up we have some PSP emulation using PPSSPP, seems pretty good but I did have to turn it down to 1x resolution. Now this thing is not going to run God of War Chains of Olympus or Killzone even with all the hacks on. I was really expecting better performance in PSP and Dreamcast emulation with this chipset and the version of Android TV that I'm running. I think there's some issues going on with the kernel and hopefully that's fixed down the road. So overall, in my initial testing with Android TV on the Rock Pi 4, performance isn't as good as I thought it would be. Now I could always move over to the regular Android version and test it there, but I'd much rather install a Linux distro like Manjaro or Debian to see how it performs with something like that. 
I'm also really interested to see how this thing stacks up against the Raspberry Pi 4, so if you're interested in seeing some videos like that, let me know in the comments below and definitely keep an eye on the channel. The Rockchip 3399 has been out for a little while now and I expected to see some kernel enhancements and better performance out of this chip. But as it sits, as of making this video, I haven't seen much of a performance increase, at least in Android, from a year ago when the RK3399 was released. So hopefully when I move over to a Linux distro, I will notice an increase in performance and stability. But until then, I really appreciate you guys watching. Like I said, if there's anything else you want to see running on this board, or if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button or maybe subscribe to the channel. But like always, thanks for watching.